What's up everybody, it's Spring Decisions here and today I want to talk about something because it's come up a couple times in the last, I want to say, month. People who have had issues where the prosecutor is looking to prosecute them without an injured party or a complaining witness. Well, I've given you Alan D. Wright, 468 U.S. 737 in this 1984 case that dealt with standing. The requirement of standing, however, is a core component derived directly from the Constitution. A plaintiff must allege personal injury fairly traceable to the defendant's alleged unlawful conduct and likely to be redressed by the requested relief. Now, what happens is we talked about things such as um, traffic stops, where there is no injured party, and why traffic court as a a um, non-court of record or an administrative court is one of those where it has to be dismissed if you're challenging the fact that there is no complaining witness and there are other cases that I'm gonna go to but I'm gonna do something that's that most of you are not very familiar with because I'm gonna give you a case today and it's Elk Grove United School District versus New New Do five or to US 1 2004 we have explained the prudential standing encompasses the general prohibition on litigants raising another person's legal rights that is what the prosecutor is doing when they're charging you as the state because the state has no legal right or standing because again like in Allen B right must allege injury fairly traceable to the defendant's unlawful conduct. And then, remember we talked about probable cause, which only comes from a crime. And a lot of times when you hear about the traffic stop, you hear people refer to what is the corpus delecti, which is what is the body of the crime. So there must be an injury fairly traceable to the actions of the defendant's unlawful conduct. So there are a lot of nuances in there that deal with the biggest words in law, which are if and or, because there must be something else. The fundamental aspects of standing is that it forces the party seeking to get his complaint before a federal court and not on the issues he wishes to be adjudicated. And that's Bass v. Cone, and it's a 1968 case. But also, if a plaintiff lacks standing, then courts, all courts are legally, constitutionally incapable of proceeding because courts only adjudicate justiciable controversies. And this comes from United States v. Interstate Commerce Commission, 337 U.S. 426, 1949. Now, you're not going to hear that often because no one wants to take away the revenue generation possibilities of the lack of standing and remember any right that you're wishing to assert must be done in writing and you must assert it and lastly the duty of the court as of every judicial tribunal is limited to determining the rights of persons or property which are actually controverted which is Tyler B judges of the court of registration now I've done this case a couple times before but I want you to understand that Rath v. Selden, it's a 1975 case. Petitioners lack standing to sue when not directly injured by the defendant. In essence, the question of standing is whether the litigant is entitled to have the court decide the merits of the dispute or particular issues. Remember, if and or. All of those require corpus delecti because those are the body of the crime, which also deals with the mens rea because, again, the conduct talks about the guilty mind, but there has to be a direct injury because there are other cases, but not going to get into that one because it's controversial because there's very little information on that particular case. I'll give it to you guys later. That is something that I'll actually deal with in the master class. So if you haven't signed up for that, sign up for it because this is where the rubber meets the road and it talk, starts to separate those that are actually in this to truly get better, to learn, and become more effective at the things that they're doing. So remember, a prosecutor cannot raise a standing or raise a case 
without a complaining witness, which is also brings up motions of dismissal because if there is no complaining witness, there is no injury, there is no adjudication. And we dealt with that, why? Tyler v. Judges in United States versus Interstate Commerce. So thank you guys for watching. Continue watching, liking, sharing. Don't forget to comment. And most of all, don't forget to support the podcast, the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute podcast, which is on all your major podcasting platforms, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and the like.